CodeKit automatically refreshes web browsers, both on your Mac and remote devices. Here's how it works. I'm going to add demo site as a project, and in here I've got a single index.html file and a SAS style sheet. To preview this site, all I need to do is click the preview button in CodeKit's window, or pro tip, I can hold it down for a second and see every browser installed on my Mac so I can choose which one I want right away. I'll pick Safari, and that opens a special address, which for me is vdk.local colon 5757. For you, it'll be yourcomputername.local colon 5757. Now, if your name's really long, you can shorten it in the sharing pane of macOS's system preferences. And that's it. CodeKit has a built-in web server, which is now previewing our active project. If I wanted to see this on an iPhone, an iPad, or another device, all I'd need to do is make sure that device is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as this Mac, and then copy this address over to that device. CodeKit will show the site everywhere and refresh browsers as we work. And speaking of, let's pull up demo site in Sublime. I've got my SAS file open, and here's the background color. Eh, you know what? Green is out. I'm going to go with red and hit Command S to save the file. As I do, CodeKit processes the SAS file and in the background, reloads every connected web browser. If you preview your site on Android or Windows devices, there's something to keep in mind. CodeKit's default preview address uses Bonjour Networking. That's what gives you your computer name.local colon 5757. It's a nice human readable address. Unfortunately, Android and Windows don't always support Bonjour. So for those platforms, you'll need to use an alternate address. To get that, simply open the server popover in CodeKit's window. The Bonjour address is listed first, and then the non-Bonjour is second. It's always just your local IP address, colon 5757. For Android and Windows, you'll need to load this address in those devices. Finally, if you'd like to use this address by default when you click the preview button, you can accomplish that in CodeKit's Preferences window. Simply go to Browsers, and then select your default preview address right here. CodeKit's built-in web server handles static content, such as HTML files, images, scripts, and style sheets, all on its own. But if you're using server-side processing like PHP or advanced HTTP requests like puts and gets, then you'll need to set up an external server to help CodeKit process those requests. That's easy. Let's take a look. In demo side, I renamed index.html to index.php. But if I preview the website right now, I'll get a warning from CodeKit telling me that the built-in server can't handle PHP files on its own. Well, that's because the built-in server doesn't have PHP. It's not a full LAMP stack. I need a server that does have PHP. And I've already got one running. It's MAMP. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's free online. And MAMP is already set to host the demo site folder on my desktop. So all I need to do now is tell CodeKit to talk to MAMP to handle that PHP file. For that, I'll simply go into Project Settings, choose the Browser Refreshing category, and scroll down to External Server Options. There's a single switch here. I'll flip it on. As soon as I do, I see that my website is now loading correctly in the browser. And what's happening is MAMP's running at its default address, localhost colon 8888, which I've entered in this text field here. If your server is running at a different address, that's where you enter it. And in my browser, critically, I'm still viewing CodeKit's special preview address. For me, VDK local colon 5757. I don't load MAMP's address here, localhost colon 8888. And the reason is that CodeKit cannot refresh MAMP's address directly. It can only refresh the special preview addresses that come from the server popover in the CodeKit window. With the app configured this way, anytime I load a page in my browser, that request goes to CodeKit. CodeKit proxies it out to MAMP, MAMP handles the request, sends the response back to CodeKit, and CodeKit then sends that back to the browser, along with a special snippet that allows the app to refresh the page as you work. Now, when you're using an external server, every request is proxied out to it, even for assets that CodeKit can normally handle on its own, like images or HTML files. CodeKit just acts as a middleman so that it can refresh the page.